are these people? Um, we're going to talk about the most horrifying expo that is probably happening that you're probably not aware of. Um, right down there. Can you read that? Is that possible to read, Indy? That little, little badge right there. Um, Street Smarts VR Corp. That's it. Operation. We'll, we'll get to them. So I want everyone to hold that in their heads. So this is out of Declassified UK. Matt Bro Broomfield. Um, I don't, I, I've not read much of him, but we're we're going to give it a shot. Um, but he writes, Inter London's Counter Terror Expo, a hotbed of pro-Israel paranoia, the security industry is cashing in on Palestinian protests. Who would have thought they would like to quell any and all protests? It's, it's funny how that works. Um, July 1st, how long ago was that? A minute. That's how long y'all y'all missed this. The, July first. This is all y'all y'all. No, I saw this. Miss this. No, I yeah. saw this because I get I get decla. I'm subscribed to D. I'm subscribed because I'm a crazy person. I'm subscribed yes. to Declassified UK uh, newsletter, which everybody should be. By the way, go to Declassified UK dot uh, com, I believe, or dot org, and you'll look them up. But uh, all the links will be in the in the description and subscribe and get their email newsletter so that you're not three weeks behind next time. But yeah, yeah. let's do this. Um, Declassified is one of these, right? Pretty sure. They are. Um, they are. And yes, a founding. Founding. $10 original cash out from Anna. Thank you. Yes. OG. Appreciate you, Anna. One um, of the original 17 outlets. Thank you, Anna. So Britain's largest gathering of counterterrorism experts assembled in London last month to discuss what one police chief called legal but harmful protest. Following Israel's war on Gaza inside a cavernous Docklands conference hall, companies at the Counterterror Expo displayed gas mask clad dummies and crowd control systems as enthusiastic AI reps promised revolutionary advance in surveillance. Tools for hacking phones with brute force, monitoring someone's emotional state based on their social media, and rapidly digesting the contents of an acquired computer were all up for sale. Among the potential customers were foreign policy departments, including officers fresh from Georgia's violent crackdown on anti-Russian protests. Several foreign police departments. Wait, stop. That foreign works. police departments. Not foreign yeah. policy, but foreign police departments. So they're right. entertaining. Same difference. Yeah. <laughs> well... Um, I feel you. Well, but yes, but I p words, put a little, put a little, <laughs> little poppy p words. Sorry, I skipped over that. Um, no, no, he's got foreign policy. Some we talk about a lot, so I can understand. But yeah. go ahead, that changes the context a little. Several, bit. <laughs> several salespeople declined to explain their products to the media. I can't believe they let you people in here. One rep told Declassified <laughs> after seeing our press card. <laughs> I think it's disgusting. He says. <laughs> <laughs> which is just hilarious. So her company markets AI tools for military and law enforcement to process recordings of people's voices. When delegates weren't browsing spyware or sipping craft beer with a 12 pound world food meal deal, they could listen to the security industry's leading lights. These included detective chief superintendent, Maria Lovegrove, who runs Britain's prevent strategy against radicalization. She trumpeted 50, three arrests for terrorism offenses since October 7th. Only one of these was for violence. The rest concerned social media posts or attending gatherings. So, thought police, sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> so, asked whether this data suggests police are overreacting to peaceful prote Palestine protests, Lovegrove valorized an early intervention approach. She told Declassified this was the greatest tool in preventing terror attacks and insisted officers only arrest and prosecute when we have to. Uh huh. Among those arrests were three women found guilty for wearing paraglider stickers at a protest. Oh my god. Paragliders. So scurry. Dom Murphy, the Met's counterterrorism commander, told delegates he was monitoring legal but harmful. What, what is that, Andy? Legal but harmful. Um, but well, um, not illegal, but yeah, harmful, yeah. but but against our narrative, very much so. Pro protests and the risks of low sophistication attacks by people radicalized online 
or at university since October 7th. Just very wow. unsophisticated. Yes. Unsophisticated. Terrible. Um, how, how, wait, uh, they're legal, but they're still harmful, right? Uh, harmful. And, and that's what he's saying. Um, peaceful, but still harmful. So peaceful, yeah, harmful legal. to your narrative. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, but okay. harmful enough that we'll make it illegal and arrest you for it. So we're going to get to that. If there are 100,000 people at a protest and one person holding a Hamas flag, we will find them and we will kill them. We have a certain set of skills. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, and, no. And, no. <laughs> we will find them and arrest them, Murphy reassured attendees. <laughs> a majority of recent arrests targeted individuals aged under 17. He boasted as proof that the early intervention approach was working. It's, it always it's sure get, get them young, get them while they're young. You know, more so, jails, less schools, more jails, less schools. Right? Isn't uh -huh. that isn't that the no? Uh huh. Yep. It's 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 very much things. It's very much things. The worst. Anyway, um, breaking British Gestapo thugs have arrested ten members of Youth Demand for planning to participate in peaceful protests. Using draconian new powers, allowing for preemptive action against individuals believed to be planning significant disruption. Kid mm -hmm. Clarenberg, as as we know. Um. So here's the video. We're gonna, we're gonna pull this up. Have you seen this? Do you see this online yet? I um, don't know if I have. Okay. Well, we're gonna go for a ride then, and action. At the so it's a little hard to read. So right at the moment, because there's wait, there's intel today. You guys are going to disrupt things as part of youth demand. You are all going to be arrested for conspiracy to cause public nuisance. The officers here are going to come towards you now and do that, and then explain to you a bit more. You can film. That's fine. Till you release, come forward. This is conspiring to cause a threat. How is this more harmful than the people Israel? Another so location where the same Free thing happened. Okay. Guide them where they're going, they don't want to fall over. Uh, well, well, they're very, they're being very polite and gentle in their handling of yeah. of the protesters, I have to say. Very dangerous um, criminals. I don't, think US like. I don't think U.S. cops are behaving quite <laughs> that way with protesters. No. no. Holy shit. Not at all. That's like... That's like did 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 he give him a a, a little a little massage it's, afterwards? It's, it is almost like excuse me, sir. We have to arrest you now. <laughs> you know, like, I'm 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 so sorry. So sorry, mm -hmm. old boy. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. Uh. Um. <laughs> so, oh man. Another panelist praised Bill Britain's ability to preemptively arrest people order offenses at demonstrations and target them for terror offenses further down the line. Craig McCann, former senior prevent officer, expressed the mood in the room when he described ceasefire marches as a permissive environment for the transfer of extremist ideology. Like other speakers... Can we flip back to it? What? Oh, Can yeah. We flip that, back? Would, that would help. Um, Thanks, fam. Like other speakers, he sought to delegitimize opponents of Israel's war on Gaza by characterizing pro-Palestinian protests as an Islamist camp conflating with far-right anti-Semitism. They're antiseptic. Indeed. That's <laughs> Everybody's antiseptic. Yep. <laughs> so, McCain explicitly linked Palestinian nationalism with Nazism, and Israel's propaganda point. Fellow panelists claimed parts of London were a no-go zone for Jews. Discussing threats from street protests all the way through to terrorism, the conference presented far left, far right, Islamist, and environmentalist ideologies as equal interrelated threats to British society. This worldview echoes a recent report on political violence by UK government advisor Lord Walney. The unelected peer, better known as John Woodcock, Woodcock, has deep links to the Israel hey. lobby and arms industry, sparking allegations. Of hey, it's Britain. Uh, phrasing. Um, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, pretty funny phrasing. how they're spinning it. Yes, thank you. How they're spinning it that far left, far right, Islamist and environmentalist ideologies <laughs> are all the same. Yeah, very much. Because I, I can 
clearly see that far right ideology is as is <laughs> equally as violent as as you know extinction rebellion for example right uh, okay well discussing threats from street protests we read that um so the worldview echoes a recent report on political violence by john woodcock after lunch discussion turned to british values and protecting england from the menace of social media and foreign flags that vexed thousands of officers under Murphy's command. So vexed. I love it. <laughs> so remember, remember at the beginning, the photo at the beginning of this, right? Was that was that guy with the badge, right? Remember Street Smarts VR? That's that was on there. Uh, yeah. I told everyone to remember. So I, I, I want people to take a look at what kind of things are actually being showed at this es expo. And it was very hard to find video footage of anything actually happening at this expo. I'm sure there's a load of terrible stuff, but um, this one, this one I could find. So we're gonna take this, and I'm also gonna put this on it just in case. Fair use <laughs> should be fair use. We're gonna comment on this and make color commentary and all that stuff. So definitely usable. <laughs> so that's. Look at, look at this nonsense. So Street Smarts VR, VR is a virtual simulation training platform for law enforcement and first responders. We expect our first responders to go out and put their lives on the line. We can provide the best training that technology allows. Developed in partnership with law enforcement and the military by a veteran and former first responder, Street Smarts VR is based on real life situations. Using body cam footage and advanced motion capture technology, we create realistic training scenarios for any circumstance. Mm -hmm. You're still going to need to see your license and registration. Sir, I need to see your base ID before I can let you go. What now? He's got a knife! Our technology lets instructors control scenarios with multiple branches at multiple points, creating dynamic situations to test officer response. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Drop it! Drop it right now! Drop it! Instructors can then replay a scenario, examining different camera angles, perspectives, and threat distances. I'm Our going to imagine a murder 75 different ways. Evaluations to unit-wide behavior, scenario preference, and Holy shit! Yeah, dude. Street Smarts VR this also reminds me of like with unlimited usage. Agencies hang on a size can get a future proof. This also reminds me like an efficient training package see, like, the, that includes regular updates, 24/7 customer support, and no hidden fees. You see like the when Chinese videos? Yes. Yes. When they when like the they recreate. Yes. Yeah. Or even the ones where like the news are trying to recreate what happened to Tiger Woods. I think that would be beneficial for any agency. The future of training is here. You turn it down. Okay, yeah, I did. Dude. Um, what training right there. the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, <sighs> there's nightmare fuel for you. So, you know, it's kind of funny. In my professional life, in my other life, um, I attend trade shows occasionally. A couple times a year and um yeah this is holy crap <laughs> you walk <laughs> up to boots and it's ways to spy and yeah, do you annoy and yeah and destabilize people sure do you think, do you think the vr has like a, a old lady with a pot of water scenario or you know just to be super relevant um oh my anyway <laughs> or a guy on a roof? Uh, yeah, well, possibly. Well, slope roof, slope roof, slope. Um, many felt the next generation tech on display would ensure ever more effective crackdowns on street protest and dissent. If nothing else, the gadgets give a golden parachute to riot retired police. It seemed mandatory for every other stall to boast a former cop now paddling AI image detection software on the basis of their years in the force. McCann was among many to have traded in his warrant card for a job in the security industry. He's now a director of Spectrum, strategic preventive expertise to counter terrorism risks using upstream measures. As opposed to of course! Absent from the exile, of course. real reflection on, how, on, on the terror Israel inflicts on Palestinians, nor how austerity 
or foreign policy can lead more young people down the path of violence. Eat a cac 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 cacao cacao. Name? Um. Ah. Uh, right. You got me. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what those vowels. Those are those Uncle. weird vowels. Yeah, those are those weird vowels. Gonna have to learn those. So Kaiko. Kai 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 Kai. Anyway, I'm the hey. <laughs> Royal Holloway University, who attended the expo, later told Declassified that Palestinian activists were being targeted by draconian legislation, which stands in stark contrast with the supposed British values of freedom of expression and democracy. I I didn't think that it had that that much of that those values, but myself, no, nope. personally, mainly colonialism, but. She accuses the British authorities of using counterterrorism to repress protests which are inconvenient to the government and its diplomatic relationships, in this case particularly those with the U.S. and Israel. So fun. Um, the conference oh. venue, Excel, is owned by the UAE. The Gulf state is of a course. British ally despite its significant support for brutal militias in Yemen and Sudan that have fueled unrest. So wait, they own in, a conference center? Yes, in Britain. Yeah. Hmm. God forbid. Nice. Um, not that there's not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, there was little acknowledgement that Israel's invasion of Gaza has killed over thirty-eight thousand Palestinians, and left the country's leadership under investigations for war crimes and genocide at international courts. We're going to get to some of those later tonight. The Med's war crimes teams, which falls under Murphy's counterterror command. Has itself received complaints about Israel's conduct, which he's meant to investigate. Yet Murphy reassured attendees this was only taking place as a legal requirement since Palestine activists had filled, filed former police complaints rather than at the Met's own behest. Flaws in the prevent scheme were not up for discussion, despite its repeated failures to identify terrorists and tendencies to alienate vulnerable communities. Critics say encourages doctors, social workers, and teachers to report young people to police, often sowing mistrust with authority figures. You think? Like, what? Okay. Um, one panel. Yes, did they want to turn everybody. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. That was like one of the things that Whitney Webb talked about a long time ago was that they want to turn citizens into spies and tur get neighbors to turn neighbors in. That's one of the overall plans of the Agenda 2030 Great Reset, own nothing and we'll be happy type of yeah. narrative. Social credit, and, all that fun stuff. And here we go with the with all the spot the legal but non lethal spying and and yeah. you know non aggression plus aggression tactics in order to get people to do what you want them to do and and steer narrative. This is. This is what we're talking about here. Nightmare fuel. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Um, one panelist did warn that the UK government had traded economic growth for social cohesion, leaving young people angry, frustrated, and shut out from mainstream politics. As the parole board's own legal director suggested, Britain's crumbling short-staffed prisons remain hotbeds of Islamic radicalism. This could raise questions over the focus on charging and jailing young people for holding signs at protests or posting on Facebook. But rather than advocating for more public spending to promote integration, police commanders seem to expect social services to take on ever more responsibility for tracking vulnerable youths. After all, Naturally. Why, why trust chief constables to actually address root causes when scaremongering around Palestine environmental activism is good for business in their next career? So, And in their current career, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Any... Any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, we would. I don't think that we would allow a a foreign country to own a conference center here in the United States. I don't know. <laughs> do you, um, you don't. You don't like that, the CCP well, Expo Center. You don't. That's not. Well, wait a minute, because then then does that technically become like diplomatic immunity, <laughs> where like they. <laughs> Like anything can go there and it literally becomes the soil of that country. And they like, yeah, that's a little bit problematic and, and an issue for sure. Um, uh, 
this whole weaponry AI stuff so again. And the UK was cool with it. I mean, they sent, the, I know, foreign cops attending this. Okay. I, yeah. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. Um, great work. Great reporting by Mark Broomfield. Um, again, sub subscribe and support Declassified UK and independent media. Because where else are you hearing a story like this? Um. A new world order awaits. Future's terrifying, and I'm not ready for it. Um, but, you know, talking about these things is most likely why we're demonetized. So if you want to get around that system, you can go to code-v.com slash Indian News Network, scan that QR code on your screen, or go to the description and find it there. Um, but, you know, if you can't give monetarily because you're one of the poor like ourselves, you could just, you know, do all the engagement stuff, like, subscribe, share, comment. All the stuff you already every other channel asks you to do. So, and you know what? Don't do it. All right. Don't 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 go. Don't subscribe. <laughs> wait. What? Wait. Wait. What? Don't do it. Just, Stop. It's, what? it's not worth it. <laughs> oh come on, man.